So just to show you, this is what Gordon does all the time now. He has been sitting there for three hours. This is That's where he likes to sit. And as soon as I walk over here and start talking about records, he will get up and walk away. Hello again, I'm Robert Fifth, and I'm, I want to talk about some records now. Every time. Uh, anyway, the records I'd like to talk about are some psych finds that I have uh, recently uh, purchased. Uh, and some not quite psych finds coming up a little bit later. Let's start it off with Nuggets Volume 2. This was just released from Rhino, a two-album set on this uh, wonderful psychedelic uh, color splatter vinyl here with the uh, old-style looking uh, inner sleeve there. But yeah, that looks pretty cool, right? The nice light blue with the green and purple little splotches in there looking like uh, pills that got wet, maybe. Uh, anyway, Nuggets Volume 2. Now, these songs were already released like this in the Nuggets box set that came out on Record Store Day, but I think that was just regular black vinyl, but now I've got this uh, Volume 2 uh, by itself, and it continues in the great Nuggets tradition. The back cover looks similar. The front cover looks similar. It's They're still calling it our, uh, original artifacts from the first psychedelic era, even though basically this is garage rock. There's always that thing where people think that psychedelic and garage rock are kind of interchangeable, still not sure about why that is. But uh, yeah, great stuff on here. Uh, two albums, uh, plenty of music on here. I think there's probably like, what, 28 tracks on here? And it uh, never lets up. It's great stuff, as you would expect. Um, this one also, uh, just like the other one, kind of puts in big hits with the more obscure stuff. Now, I've known pretty much all these songs on here for years and years after buying CD compilations and being a big fan of psychedelic music. Uh, but it also has stuff on here that everybody would know. Like, it, the, the album actually starts off with The Love and Spoonful, Do You Believe in Magic? Uh, 96 Tears from Question Mark and the Mysterians is on here. Double Shot of My Baby's Love from Swing and Medallions is a part of this. Uh, a Little Bit of Soul from The Music Explosion. do 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 That stuff used to get played on oldies radio all the time, even throughout the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. So yeah, I think your average person would probably know those songs, but it also has the great uh, garage rock. Seven and Seven is from uh, Love. That's probably my favorite song from those guys. You've got uh, I Saw the Light from the Five Americans. Uh, you've got, uh, I mean, like I said, it just really never <laughs> lets up on here. The Witch from the Sonics, that's one of the best tunes on here. Great, like, hardcore garage stuff. So, Talk Talk from the Music Machine is a part of this. Uh, yeah, just a little girl from Syndicate of Sound. It's, uh, you know, the, the, the classic garage rock stuff, a couple of big hits, and then some more obscure stuff in here as well. Make for a perfect listen, and that, uh, you know, that uh, color splatter vinyl just kind of really adds to it. I, I, I hope they keep this Nugget stuff going. I know they've got earlier stuff in the 80s, like where they take specific types of garage rock, like more punk kind of stuff, more mellow kind of stuff, more California, you know, whatever, and they have those. Those definitely need a re-release. And uh, really looking forward to Volume 3. I know that the box set had Volume 1, this, and an extra disc, so maybe they'll release that separately coming up as well. But yeah, I would definitely, don't wait, I would definitely recommend this if you don't have the uh, box set already. Also, purchase the, uh, the Great Conspiracy, the second album from the Peanut Butter conspiracy and uh again i've had the peanut butter or the yeah this conspiracy is spreading their first album for wow decades at this point i've also had a cd compilation that uh i don't remember who put that out but i've had that for years and years as well but never actually had this uh their second album before so i'm glad to finally get my hands on this a near mint uh copy of this as a matter of fact that it's just excellent condition uh you can see the the guys and the lady there on the back, a female mixed in with the guys here, kind of got a Jefferson Airplane, really early Jefferson Airplane kind of sound with their harmonies. Uh, you know, she's not exactly Gray Slick, but um, they kind of have that kind of sound, the, the West Coast kind of lighter psych stuff. Some of this almost sounds like sunshine pop uh, with the music anyway. The music uh, is pretty straightforward. There's a few flourishes in there that kind of go off like the, uh, the final track on here, but... Um, yeah, it, the music's pretty pretty solid, basic, 1966-67 kind of pop rock stuff. I think one of the things, too, that puts this band in the annals of uh, psychedelic music and uh, make, seals the deal as far as, yes, this is a psychedelic band, it, it are the lyrics. You know, the, the, basically all the songs are basically, you know, hey, you know what, let's, let's take some drugs. Uh, it, titles like Invasion of the Poppy People and Captain Sandwich and uh, Time is After You and, of course, the opening track, Turn on a Friend to the Good Life. 
Uh, yeah, the peanut butter conspiracy, definitely the lyrics are, are what seal the deal as far as this is definitely a, a, a psychedelic group. These guys used to show up in a lot of those um, American international films, those little drive-in movies where they needed the, uh, the garage band or the psych band. They, these guys would be a part of that. Actually, they were featured in um, Return of, or, um, the, to the Valley of the Dolls from 1970, one of my favorite movies of all time. Peanut Butter Conspiracy was in that. So, yeah, a little bit... Uh, I'm glad to have this. It's a great listen all the way through. Uh, obviously no big hits or anything on here, but, uh, if you're, if you're looking for some more of like a mellower kind of dreamy, uh, vocals with that, ah, uh, you know, taking you away and just your basic kind of four chord garage rock and roll, a little bit on the lighter side of that, I would definitely, uh, recommend the Great Conspiracy, the second album from the Peanut Butter Conspiracy. And, and what is a Peanut Butter Conspiracy? Well, there's stories about that as well, exactly what that means. And uh, I know there's been a few rumors going around over the year. I, Vinyl Richie was one that had a video. It's been probably over a year at this point where he explained one of the theories about what the peanut butter conspiracy is. It basically goes back to this era, obviously, where the Vietnam War was going on and uh, a lot of young people trying to avoid the draft. And so what they did was uh, smear peanut butter all over their... Uh, buttock fold and uh you know when they do the 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 physical where you get totally naked and they're looking and you have to bend over uh or take off your underwear or whatever all oh, the backside would be covered with peanut butter no word on whether it was the creamy or crunchy peanut butter but uh the guy would look at that doing the exam and be like what oh come on because it would look like you shit yourself and then if you wanted to take it a step further uh, make sure you get that uh, mental health uh, discharge right before you have to go off to war. You take your hand and you go, ah, spread it all over your face and lick it and whatever. And that's guaranteed, yeah, you're, you're not fit for service. And that's apparently the great peanut butter conspiracy once they figured out that's what uh, some of the young people were doing. So, yeah, I guess this band was originally called the, the great peanut butter uh, controversy. Uh, which I guess that would be a controversy as well. Actually, the great peanut butter conspiracy was later uh, the name of a Jimmy Buffett song, but that was basically just about young people stealing peanut butter. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've never heard that the band actually has said that that's what their name means. They've never really explained it. They just explain who came up with the name and they, you know, the initials were PCB, but they had to come up with something or... I don't know. I, I, just, I do like that story, though. Would you like to know what the chocolate watch band is? <laughs> There's a story about that as well. Uh, similar uh, thing, but this one has to do with being uh, strip searched. And chocolate watch band. Yeah, they, they were another one of these groups that were always in the, in the drive-in movies and stuff like that. So yeah, the, the great uh, peanut butter conspiracy... Uh, now explained. You're welcome. So in addition to the two excellent uh, Nuggets reissues on uh, Color Final that came out, I mentioned that, that there were uh, there was another kind of newer psych uh, comp that I want to talk about. It's really more of a garage rock type thing called Garage Psychedelic. I thought this was uh, newer than it was. This actually came out in September of 2022 in the UK. I thought it was brand new. I uh, kind of missed out on this up until now, but uh, it is excellent. And this one's a little bit special. It's a, a two album set, both of them on uh, green vinyl. And what makes this one a little bit different is disc one is, you know, the classic stuff. Some of it you've heard a hundred times, like I had too much to dream last night from the electric prunes is on here. Psychotic reaction with the count five is on here. And I'm not like everybody else from chocolate watch band. Uh, did I mention what the Chocolate Watch Band, what their name means? Anyway, but uh, disc two is newer music, newer bands from the, uh, you know, from current days. You know, Tame Impala is on here, Goat, uh, the OCs, which, by the way, I have OCs and Tame Impala. Absolutely love the Goat album. So, yes, I do have these actual records, but <laughs> I just don't show them a lot. But yeah, Garage Psychedelic is what it's called, and uh, it really blends the older stuff, including bands that, you know, you don't hear a lot of, like the, the Boogeymen and the uh, uh, the Squires and, and bands like that. Even Harry Nilsson shows up with Jump Into the Fire, but it's kickoff side too. So it's got a lot of um, variety on here. 13th Floor Elevators is a part of it as well. 
You've got the Sonics kicking the whole thing off. Uh, so a lot of great garage rock from the 60s. And then uh, you get one tune from 1991 to kind of, uh, you know, center everything. And that, they are the stairs with Weed Bus. And then it goes into, like, the current stuff. Like I said, Tame Impala and Goat. You also have the Hives on here. Pond has an excellent song on here. Uh, but it's all of these bands that kind of have that throwback garage rock, kind of a little bit of psychedelic added in. Uh, but, uh, Novella is part of that as well. And just, uh, yeah, they really, it really blends nicely. It really is a nice snapshot of the older stuff. Like I said, some of it you've heard a hundred times, some of it not so much. And then the newer stuff, and it really, really blends nice into this nice, uh, two album package. And, uh, I'm really glad I picked this up. Garage Psychedelic. Don't skip out on this if you, uh, find this somewhere for, uh, relatively inexpensive. I think it's, it's a double album on color vinyl, so it's not, you know, super cheap. It's like a $35, uh, thing, $30, something like that. But yeah, from the UK. So I'm really glad I, uh, picked this up. And, uh, it's, it's like, you know, some of the newer stuff, I'm not into all of it, but this seems to be like the best of the best. This is a five-star comp. I mean, great old stuff. Like I said, heard that a lot. But the newer stuff, a lot of it I wasn't familiar with. And it's all very intense sounding. It's all rocking out. There's nothing that's really too shoegaze or kind of too dreamy. And it's all very electric and very exciting. And uh, yeah, I crank this up. Garage Psychedelic. So back to the older stuff now. How about the history of the Bonzos? A double album from the uh, 70s celebrating the, well, history of the of the Bonzo Doodah Dog Band, or sometimes just the Bonzo, Bonzo uh, Doodog Band. <laughs> but yeah. So uh, this is, they're called the Bonzos here. And uh, this doesn't have my favorite track on it, which is the one about Zelda from the, uh, you know, Sector 7 or whatever that is. I absolutely love that track. Uh, but it does have their most famous song on here, which is I'm the Urban Spaceman. And if you have not heard of that, you're probably not alone. They're not a huge group here in the U.S. Uh, they're more of a satirical type of thing. Um, they got the psych stuff going on just because they're so bizarre and way out there. Definitely an English uh, sense of humor. They're, of course, from England. Uh, they're they're mo known mostly for appearing in the um, Magical Mystery Tour TV movie that the Beatles did. They're in that. They are doing their song Death Cab for Cutie, which obviously inspired that band's name, but they have this whole like Elvis thing going on with that song with the, you know, the, the, what is it? Like a pink, uh, scarf the guy's wearing is you're going to have to pay the fare, death cab for cutie. But uh, that song's not on here either. So, uh, this isn't much of a history. It doesn't have my favorite. It doesn't have the big song from magical mystery tour, but it does have, I'm the urban spaceman. It also has some, uh, somewhat un inexplicable remakes of like Terry Stafford's suspicion, uh, that just gets kind of bizarre. The Sound of Music, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, and then some just their usual uh, bonkers kind of stuff here. Uh, a decent listen a couple of times. It doesn't all work, but it, it's, it, you know, if you want a quick uh, snapshot of the, uh, uh, the doodah band here, uh, yeah, check out the history of the uh, Bonzos. Um, but yeah, some funny stuff, some weird stuff, like a whole thing about, we want to interview you about shirts. Tell us how you feel about shirts. Like, I don't, I don't know where they're going with it. Like a man on the street thing. It ends with just a guy laughing. So apparently it's, he found it very, very funny, some of the stuff on here. But some of it's just strange. Some of it's kind of absurdism. Uh, so yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, the history of the Bonzos, uh, check that out before you go buying full links. But I, I still love the Zelda song that, that's not on there. So not exactly psychedelic, more of like a psychedelic artist that got more into like just straight up Bayou funk and, but still great albums, Dr. John. Now this is nothing like his fantastic debut, Gree Gree, which is one of my favorite albums of all time. Sort of a voodoo psych that really, I mean, one of the most atmospheric albums ever. Absolutely love that album. But he kind of changed it up, made himself a little more accessible, a little more commercial. This album uh, came right after the big uh, commercial success of In the Right Place, which has the big hit, Right Place, Wrong Time. Uh, this is uh, decidedly Bonnaroo. This actually, the Bonnaroo uh, Music Festival was named after this album. And of course, decidedly Bonnaroo, that's just one of those Dr. John phrases. This is one of those guys that just came up with his own his own phrases, like, uh, you know, Chuck Berry used to do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a great album cover too. I love the, like, the kind of the foil look on here and that great photo of him. And uh, yeah, great music on here all the way through. He's actually backed by the meters 
on this album. So that just really, uh, I mean, nails it. Again, not exactly psychedelic, but more like some, like I said, like Bayou Funk type stuff that you can expect from uh, later stuff. But a lot of great songs on here. You've got starting off with Quitters Never Win, which has a nice sound uh, musically, but the lyrics are just basically uh, Quitters Never Win, Winners Never Quit. Uh, you get some, I don't know, positivity. Uh, you get some, you know, life positive uh, of mood from uh, Dr. John there. Pair that up with Billy Ocean's when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, and you've got a double shot of, you know, positivity cliches. But anyway, uh, yeah, not my favorite on here. Stealing's pretty cool. The Most scotious, another one of those Dr. John kind of uh, words that he comes up with. Uh, but the, the single off of this, which is also on this, um, what it is, uh, you know, soul uh, R&B box set that came out on CD years ago. Love this. That, this on here, that's where I got introduced to it, but it's called Everybody Want to Get Rich Right Away, which has great, you know, music to it, a great beat to it, you know, it just really pumps you up and whatever, just gets you dancing or whatever, great uh, background vocals, nice funk there, but again, the lyrics, everybody wants to be uh, rich and wealthy, I'd rather be poor and healthy, you realize that rich and, and healthy aren't mutually exclusive, right, you can be rich and and be healthy. You don't have to choose that. As a matter of fact, in the U.S., it's actually a lot easier to be rich and healthy than it is to be poor and healthy. So I don't know about those lyrics. I mean, if you're poor and you get sick or something, or you have to go to the hospital, pretty much there's your savings gone. So I, I, that doesn't really make sense. I'd rather be poor and healthy than uh, rich and wealthy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> great music on here. Like I said, the meters is backing them up. It's a very, very fun album. It, it's a funky album. It's very lively. It's Dr. John and that great Dr. John uh, voice and his whole persona that he puts on. Um, but yeah, Mac Remenek. I think that's a cool name too. He should have just gone by that. But yeah, Dr. John. Dr. John! Uh, but yeah, love this album. Uh, I was not familiar with this at all. I had that CD thing that came out, you know, years and years ago where they put like his first five albums in a box, a little slip case. I had that, listen to that all the time. I guess this is the album that follows though, so... Great to finally have this, but again, not exactly psychedelic. Something else that's not exactly psychedelic, and I'll wrap it up with this one, is this band called Phoenix. I assume they're from Phoenix. This is one of those things that it's basically kind of a, you know, forgotten release. So in order to sell it on the secondhand market, it gets called psychedelic. You, you, you're familiar with this little trick, right? Where something is just like, oh, it's from 1970. It's got that kind of cover. We'll just call it psychedelic and these... These psych people will buy it. And that's exactly what happened. I bought this thinking it would be psychedelic. It was only like five bucks or something like that. Go to Discogs. It's only worth about five bucks. So nice price for it. But it's basically that type of thing that's called psychedelic, but it's not. It's, it's, it sounds like a cheap version of Blood, Sweat, and Tears. It's that very, very typical 1970, 1971 sound with the horn. And some like white soul singer that's trying to be emotive and... Oh, when I got down to the... You know, that, that kind of thing. It's got a couple songs on here that are somewhat memorable. I think the big song on here was uh, Julia's uh, Face. You know, Julia's Face! You know, it's that kind of, that kind of thing. But there's, it, this is not psychedelic at all. This is basically horn rock from 1971. <laughs> That's what I'll call it. But uh, it does have a cool song on here about, you know... He was living this life and didn't pay attention to his woman, but he was on a plane one time and thought the plane was going to crash and it just turned his whole attitude around. The band is called Phoenix. It is self-titled and it is waiting for you for like five bucks on Discogs if you want to give it a shot. Just know that it is not psychedelic at all. But that wraps up my, uh, my vinyl finds for this time around. A lot of psych and some not quite so psych. Uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. Have you heard any of these albums? Do you, do you, have you heard that uh, peanut butter conspiracy uh what their name means theory have you heard that before um but yeah definitely check out that nuggets volume two that was just released that would be the big takeaway from this uh big time so and the dr john's really cool too so uh, again thank you so much for watching hopefully i will talk to you again i'm robert fithin